So this is what I want you to do. I want you to stand on your feet and give an uproarious applause. For the first time, as Pastor Carl Darwood Wright takes the pulpit. Come on. The first time. Stretch your hands toward him. Woo! It's the first time. Stretch your hand toward God's preacher. No, on a serious note, I believe he, I know he has a word. And today as he preaches, you're preaching to us, you're preaching to those that are watching who will one day watch, but you know you're also announcing to the principalities your arrival. Listen, this is serious. When Jesus went into the, the Jordan River to be baptized by John the Baptist, it was his father's voice. He said, this is my son. He affirmed him. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. But it was Jesus' voice. When he went into the synagogue after his 40-day fast in conflict with the devil who opened up the Bible, and he said, today, somebody say today. After he read Isaiah, what would come to be Isaiah 61, he said, today, this is fulfilled in your hearing. Today, this is fulfilled. Not just the word of the Lord over Hope City, but the word of the Lord over you, your wife, your family. You're an extension of many people. And so your voice is going to announce your arrival in the spirit to the powers and principalities that have tried to really lay claim and hold over this community for too long. But how many know the devil's time been up? As soon as that stone was rolled away and it was found empty, the tomb was found empty, his time been up. But tonight we make that announcement so seriously. I want you to stretch your hands toward him. We're going to pray. And then the next voice you hear will be none other than Pastor Carl. In Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you for what you have done and what you have ordained. We thank you for the history of this moment. We thank you that all of heaven takes notice of tonight. And we thank you, God, that your word will not return void. It will accomplish the purpose for which you set it out. So as tonight, Pastor Carl opens his mouth to declare the unsearchable riches of Christ, to look to the word of God, we pray that our hearts would be open, receptive, to what you would have to say to us for if God ever we needed a word from the Lord it is certainly a day like today so Father we pray your anointing rest upon him not just for tonight but for the years to come that from this pulpit through the airwaves, through the camera through what goes on in this room your name will be made great through the messenger so Father we thank you for his life and Lord we humble our hearts to receive your word through him and if you're in agreement with that prayer, say in Jesus' name, I present to you for the first time behind the pulpit at Hope City South, Pastor Carl Wright. Come on, make some noise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Can we thank God for our apostle, the one and only Brian Michael Williams. <laughs> Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. It feels good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Well, I'm excited, and I do have a word from the Lord, so I'm going to ask you to grab your Bibles, and we're going to run over to the book of Jeremiah. Hallelujah. Over the next number of weeks, as we uh, prepare to birth out the vision for Hope City South and the ministry that will take place in and through this place, we're going to be laying some foundations, and so I wanted to start out with what I believe is one of the most important things that will mark this ministry, that will mark this ministry. I think the beauty of Hope City South is that we are an extension of a family and a, a ministry already in motion. And so pastor said it, uh, I don't remember if it was from the pulpit or in the elders meeting this morning, but he said, you know, if you want a vision statement, a mission statement, there's 66 books of this Bible. So if you want to know what this church is going to be about, you can read the Bible. Amen. A number of weeks ago, we were doing some, some work outside and Apostle was on live stream and he said, what's the word of the Lord? And I said, well, there's 66 books of it. Read it. <laughs> but I really do mean that. And so we're going to lay some foundations tonight uh, and run through the word of the Lord and see what God has to say to us. Amen. 
Hallelujah. One of the best things that you can do is build your relationship with Jesus. Hallelujah. I know it's 2021. People are doing a whole lot of things. But there is no more important thing that you can do than to build your relationship with God. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand for the reading of the word. Jeremiah, let's go to chapter number 9. And we're going to be in verse number 23. And when you have it, I want you to say amen. Hallelujah. If you can't find Jeremiah, there's a table of contents right in the front. And it'll help you. No shame. They put it there for a reason. Amen. Jeremiah 9, when you have it, say amen real loud. Verse 23, it says this. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glory, glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness, in the earth for in these things i delight saith the lord father in the name of jesus god speak father we say speak to us father open up the recesses of our mind let the word of the lord go deep today down into our soul we pray that the holy ghost brew over the seed of your word let it spring up into eternal life father i pray today in the name of Jesus, as your word is going forth, that, Father, somebody is liberated, set free, hallelujah, in, the, in their heart, in their mind, in their spirit, we decree and declare liberty to the captive. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Y'all feel good? Amen. Do I have permission to be myself tonight? All I can be is me. That's all I can be. Hallelujah. But I want to talk to you about Jeremiah 9, and the scripture tells us this in Jeremiah 9, 23. It says this, that the wise man should not glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, and, not, and let not the rich man glory in his riches. We live in an interesting hour. We live in an hour where everybody wants to be known for something. Amen. We live in an hour, hallelujah, where everybody is building their platform and building their brand and expanding, hallelujah, their reach and trying to be the latest and the greatest and the next best, best thing. We live in an hour, hallelujah, where even in the midst of a global pandemic, you're being pressured on all sides, hallelujah, to produce, hallelujah, content so that you can be the next. Am I right about it? In this hour, you have people from all sides pressuring you to become something. And everyone is trying to advise and counsel and teach. And you have a lot of people in this hour who have a whole lot to say. But when you really search what is being said, you find out that there's a whole lot of people saying a whole lot of nothing. There's a whole lot of people doing a whole lot of nothing. And there are people because of the way social media works. Hallelujah. How many have heard the expression that uh, all you have to do is teach and position yourself as an expert? Right? Now, I'm not coming against the teaching, you know, wonderful, it's awesome. But what I'm saying is you have people who are positioning themselves as experts in things that they are not experts in. Hallelujah. If you just learned how to do it yesterday, you are not an expert in it. And this is an hour where, hallelujah, we get a revelation from God or the Lord teaches us something and we run to social media, we do a Facebook Live, and then by next week we're taking registration for a class to teach on a revelation that we just got. But if you just got it and if it just came into your heart, that revelation hasn't even had time to process, hallelujah, for you to walk it out, for you to flesh out what it is that God has given to you. So Jeremiah, God is speaking and he says to us this way. He says, let the wise man, don't glory that you're wise. Don't be puffed up just because you got a little money. Your money don't mean nothing. I didn't say it. Jeremiah, God said it in Jeremiah. You, you read it, right? Same Bible. I know this is KJV. We're gonna, I usually have an NJV, but I lost my Bible. Hallelujah. But I actually really do like the King James. So we're just going to ride the wave tonight. Is that all right? So God said in Jeremiah, let the rich man, don't think that you're something because you got some money. 
Hallelujah. It says, don't let the wise man think he's something because he, he got some wisdom. And don't let the, the mighty man think he's anything just because of his might. Goes on to tell us this, but let him glory, if you're going to glory, glory in this, that you understand and know me, that I am the Lord. Not just that he is the Lord. This isn't the only thing. Now, this is what it says at the end of the verse. It says, in this, God takes delight. This is the delight of the Lord. The delight of the Lord is a people who know him. And God delights in being known. Hallelujah. He delights in being known. And he, he goes on to say, not just knowing that he is the Lord, but that he exercises loving kindness in the earth. Not just loving kindness, but he balances it out here and he says, but also know that I exercise judgment and righteousness. Hallelujah. God says, I want you to know me that I am the Lord, but don't just know that I'm the Lord. Know that it is me who is loving kindness and it is me who is judgment and it is me who is righteousness. Hallelujah. The book of Hosea tells us this, that my people perish for lack of knowledge. How many have heard it? But if you go back a few scriptures, you'll find out that the lack of knowledge it's referring to is not headiness or high mindedness or hallelujah because you didn't get the class or because you didn't get the certificate. But it is a knowledge of God. My people perish for a lack of knowledge of me. There are a people in the earth today and we are perishing on every hand because we do not know him. Hallelujah. We know a lot about God, but we do not know God. 2021 social media age. If nothing else, we have found ourselves in the midst of a people who know you know about you but don't know you know a whole lot I could ask you about so and so and some of you might say oh yeah I follow them on social media well you know I saw so and so and we make massive judgments hallelujah and rash decisions and all kinds of stuff based off of social media which is only a small part of someone's life and not only is it a small part it is a controlled part it is only the part that I want you to see based on the perception that I put out are y'all with me this is an age where, hallelujah, we are rooted in this uh, idea that we know people that we do not know. That we are friends with people that we are not friends with. Hallelujah. And we do the same thing with God. Because we go to church, because we have learned the language, because we like the songs, because we know how to lift our hands. Some of us even know how to speak in some kind of a tongue. We think that we know God. But you will, hallelujah, be surprised to learn that you can speak in a whole lot of tongues. Go to every service you can get in. Hallelujah. Die and wake up in hell. You will find yourself standing before, hallelujah, Jesus. And he will say, you'll say, well, we preached in your name. We prayed in your name. We prophesied in your name. We cast out devils in your name. And what will his response to you be? He said to them in the scripture, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. When the scripture talks about knowing, one of the interpretations of the text is an understanding of an exchange of intimacy. It is what a husband and a wife, when they know each other, there is an exchange of intimacy. And the Lord, hallelujah, he has called us into intimacy with him. The book of John tells us this is eternal life, that we might know him. God's intention in saving you and drawing you out of bondage and bringing you out of darkness into this marvelous light was not so that you could just attend church. It was not so that you could, hallelujah, get your brand out there or write your next book. I hope y'all hear me tonight. The purpose, your purpose in the earth, hallelujah to God is not simply to be known as the on fire Christian. Oh, y'all don't want to hear no talk tonight. Your purpose in the earth is not to own a title or walk in an office only. 
Your purpose in the earth, the reason you were created is so that you might know God. God saved you. Hallelujah. Called you by his own name. Changed you. Bore with you with loving kindness he drew you. Because he wants to know you. And he wants you to know him. He wants the exchange of relationships. Don't y'all know that the Father takes pleasure in spending time with you more than you take pleasure in spending time with him? The scripture says it in the book of Song of Solomon. With one flick of your eye, you've ravished my heart. The Father says, when you even think about spending time with me, it moves me. Because I want nothing more. I don't want your labor for me more than I want you. I don't want your work for me more than I want you. There is nothing you can do for God, hallelujah, that he wants more than he wants your heart. God, when you approach him in that way, as if you can do something for God. As if you could do something, hallelujah, to win his love or his validation or his authority. The Lord will skip over you and bless the one who with humility says, Lord, I'm just here. I'm just so glad to serve you. I'm just so glad to be in your presence. I don't know how to do it. I don't know. Maybe I don't have the lingo right. Maybe I don't have all of the, you know, things that I'm supposed to have. But I'm willing. If there's first but a willing mind. It is more acceptable to that that a man has than that he has not. If there is first but a willing mind. The book of Hebrews tells us that you must first believe that God is. And that he is a rewarder of those who what? Seek him. Not a title, a position, a job, a promotion, a brand deal, a book deal. Hallelujah. Seek him. Everything else is added benefit when you have him. And there's a reason why the Lord wants to have your heart in such a way that it's so captivated. Because the Lord knows and he told us in his word that if I can get your heart, I can give you everything that pertains to life and godliness. It is literally intimacy with the father is literally the highway. Hallelujah. Where manifestation travels. Intimacy with the father is the highway where God takes what he put in you and he draws it out of you. Some of you are sitting back and you're wondering why after years and years and years, your life has not manifested the promise yet. It might have a lot to do with. With your outer life, you can impress us. But with your inner life, you can impress the Lord. He knows it already. You can't even hide it from him. He knows your thoughts are far off before you even think them. Glory to God. And it is the inner life. Let's look at the book of Philippians, chapter number three. Y'all all all right? Hope I'm not preaching too hard. (laughs) I got God's approval and my apostle approval. That's all I need. I'm about to preach. (laughs) Philippians 3. When you have it, say amen. Philippians 3, it says this. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the what? We have no confidence in the flesh. Hallelujah. It goes on to say this. Paul says, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he had whereof, he might trust in the flesh, I more. King James language, what he's saying is, if anybody has a right to trust or put confidence in their resume, it's me. If anybody has a right to boast, it's me. 
he goes on to explain himself. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But the things that were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. I really want you to hear what's being said here. Paul is literally saying, if I could put it in modern terms, he's saying, oh, I'm clean. I meet all of the requirements. As touching the law, blameless. I do everything I can do right. I am well loved in my religious community. Well respected. I have a great pedigree. I come from good stock, good people. I have every reason to hold my head up high. But Paul says, when I met Christ, I counted it all as lost. I don't even put confidence in those things anymore. I don't feel as though I need to carry my head high because of where I come from or because of my pedigree or because of my degree or because of all of these things. But I hold my head high because of Christ. And when I compare Jesus to all of the fame of this world, all of the allure, all of the greatness, all of the grandeur, it really is like doo-doo. I didn't say it. Paul said it. It's in the Bible, about these in the book. As dung is what he said. Now maybe you need to travel back in time to Paul's day when they didn't have automobiles and they didn't have all kinds of great running water. Maybe you need to travel back in his time where horses were literally dropping dung in the streets because the concept made sense to them. It was like burnt in their mind. We handle our business, clean up, move on. It was in their face, the stench, the nastiness of it all the time. He said, I count it as dumb. Y'all with me? Let's read on. Verse 8. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Paul said, listen, I'm willing to give it all up if I could just know him more. If the pedigree hinders me, if the job hinders me, if, if the exit, all this stuff, if it hinders me, it, I count it as dung if I might have him. The thing about this message today is that this is not just a message that you could just say amen and go home to. But this is the word of the Lord and the word of the Lord is an interesting thing because the word of God has a, a tendency when it is preached under the anointing to travel down your row. Hallelujah. Jump up on your chest. Stare you in the face until you say yes Lord. The word of God has a tendency of finding you where you are. And the word of God is not simply just letters on a page, but it is the brazen laver that we look into to see ourselves. And when we read the word of God, when the word of God is going forth, when the word of God is being preached, there is a moment when the word is going forth where you can't just say to yourself, you know, this, is, this would be good for so-and-so. Man, if only they could hear this word. But at some point, the word will find you. And the word of God will demand a response. And so today as I'm preaching this, I don't want you to think about, you know, your neighbor, your brother, your sister, your mother, your father. I want you to think about as the word of going is going forth, how does it pertain to you? And where do you find your heart tonight? Amen. Verse 9, verse 8 said that I may win Christ. Y'all all right? I hope this isn't too much Bible for you. Verse 9, <laughs> and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship 
of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. We love that first part, the power of his resurrection. We love it. We preach it. We run. The organ say, do, 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 do. <laughs> and we shout, power, power, hallelujah. We love it. But it isn't the only thing that we're called to share in. You don't even deserve to share in the power of the resurrection if you are unwilling to share in the suffering. So we go from event to event to event, and we don't know how to live day to day. But the truth of the word of God is this. There is a daily walk, and it is not an event. Because when the hype is over, when the pictures have been taken, and you go home to your bed, the Lord who searches the hearts is there with you, and he's still asking for a response. Being made conformable unto his death the dying of the lord this is entry-level christianity we come into christianity it takes a dying to even receive him it takes a surrendering a letting go it is entry level but though it is entry level it is a principle that you cannot advance right unless you solidify it in your heart i had a friend when i was in middle school and he broke his nose and all of my time around him, he always had this crooked nose. And I was like, one day I just got up the nerve to ask him, you know, you don't want to be rude, you know. But I was a lot different when, <laughs> when I wasn't saved. So I probably enjoyed being rude. But I was like, hey, <laughs> why your nose crooked? I've been really wanting to ask you, but why is your nose so crooked? Turns out that he broke his nose and they never like went to the doctor to get it like reset or something. And so it healed crooked. This is the thing. If you don't tend to the wounds right, you're going to heal crooked. So you might have some kind of healing and you might advance in some degree. But when God does a work, when God does it, when the Lord does a work in you, he does it right. And so the Lord says, you, he said it in the word of God. He says, I see your works. I see all that you do for me. Thank you kindly. I see your edifices and your ministries and your labor and your Christian bumper sticker and your entrepreneurship that you tag Jesus on so that you can get some Christian dollars. I see it. And thank you very much. But, oh, when God has a but, he says, I have this one thing against you, that you have forgotten your first love. Repent unto your first words. And so the Lord is calling for us as a people to really search out our hearts, especially, and I, I, there's a reason why the Lord gave me to preach this on this first day of the opening of Hope City South. You might think to yourself, this message is a little tight for first day. It should be a little celebratory, right? But there's a reason why the Lord wants this word going forth as we establish Hope City South. Hallelujah. Because we are not coming in at the ground level. But we are standing on very important shoulders. And we are in the midst of a transition as God births us out from Hope City, the overarching organization. And he plants us as this first plant on the south side of Columbus. And the Lord says, when you are in the midst of transition, that is the time to do the sweeping of the house. That is the time that you want to search your heart and make sure that you are right so that you can transition well. Otherwise, it is possible that you will not be able to land at the place called destiny safely. Now, you may get there, but it's very possible that you could make your transition harder and longer than it ever needed to be because of your failure to obey the word of the Lord 
But listen to what I tell you. The knowledge of God, I told you earlier, it is the highway by which manifestation comes. Amen. Let's look at 2 Peter. Chapter number 1, verse 3. We'll come back to Philippians in a minute. 2 Peter. I'm going to read from the screen because I don't want to flip through this. <laughs> I really miss my old Bible. Y'all pray for me. Life and godliness, what? Through the who? The knowledge of him that has called us. What is the text saying? The text is saying all things that pertain to life and godliness, he has given them to you freely. But the door of their delivery is not necessarily the laying on of hands. It is not necessarily the word of prophecy. The all things that God has given you that pertain to life and godliness, it comes through the knowledge. So you can study your Greek. You can study your Hebrew. You can know the major prophets, the minor prophets. You can read the word of God and know how to interpret it. And you can have your hermeneutics and all of this stuff correct. Thank you. All the big words. And I'm not knocking it. So please hear me because I'm not against those things. Those things are very important and they have their place. But if it is not to know him. It's all in vain. It's all in vain. Knowledge puffs up. Amen. It is to know him. It says this, of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having what? escaped the corruption that is in this world through what some of y'all have a lust problem and you don't know how to get free i'm telling you right now 2021 where skin is in and everybody getting ready to have their hot girl summer i'm telling you right now this world, the age that we live in, is sex, 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 sex. Skin, lust, see it, look at it, dwell on it. And it's not just when you walk outside, but when you pick up your phone, you go on to Instagram, click that nice discover page, and the devil is lurking. You got a TikTok because you want to know how to DIY, and they got some cool stuff on there. But TikTok's feed is a Discover page, the whole thing. And you swipe, swipe, before you know it, you watch a porn. Y'all don't want to hear no talk in this church. You be on Twitter, just minding your business, got the alert that Apostle said so and so. And so you click it, you start scrolling. Y'all laugh, I'm telling you, it's the truth. Sin creepeth at the door. The devil is roaming to and fro, seeking who he may devour. He's shooting what kind of darts? It's a reason the Bible tells you that they are fiery. If they were just darts, they would pierce. But their intent is to consume. <laughs> The devil is shooting out fiery darts and his intention is to consume you. So he will find every avenue that he can come. He'll come through porn. He'll come through what seems like edification through a nice meme. He'll come through your girlfriend, your boyfriend. He'll come through your friend circle and he will encourage you right into hell. You'll jump on the band bandwagon of self-help and self-empowerment. Nothing wrong with it. Y'all know I love it. But what you will find is this. God has never called us to empower our unregenerated self. You can't love your unregenerated self. You got to be born again. Because in you that is in your flesh dwelleth no good thing. And it profits nothing. 
So you'll be empowered. You'll feel, you know, all kinds of what they call peace. You'll lay your head down at night after you saged your room and then laid your psalms on your pillow because you know they tell you to do it all. Just mix it all together. And you will find yourself empowered, having a form of freedom, and you will wake up in hell. Not just hell. Let me back it up for you. Because maybe you somebody say, see, y'all always trying to put somebody in hell. First, first of all, I didn't say it. I didn't have an opinion. I told you in the beginning, read the, <laughs> read the book. But I'll back it up for you. So not just even hell. But the Bible tells us, woe unto you who are at ease in Zion. You cry, peace, peace, and there is no peace. You got peace because you spent 29 hours watching Iyanla and you feel like you have unlocked your whole childhood. But there is no peace here. Because you have yet to repent of your sin and turn. I am your helper. I am the great counselor. I am the mighty God. And my people are perishing. Because they fail to acknowledge me as God. Hallelujah. Philippians. <laughs> Hallelujah. Philippians 3. Are you there? Where we leave off? 10? Y'all all right? I told you the word going to find you. Say, yes, Lord. Verse 10, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection. And just as a side note, the power of the resurrection wasn't just power to miracles, signs, and wonders. It was the power to leave dead things. The power of his resurrection was to get up with a new body and to walk out of that grave and leave everything that was dead behind. Hallelujah. If you really want resurrection power, you ought to tell the Lord, give me resurrection power. I want to leave that old man behind. Be conformable unto your death. The Holy Ghost is not just power to speak in tongues and to prophesy, but it is the power to die right. The Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost power is not just faith for miracles, which is important, but it is that voice that when you said all that you were saying to your friends, and you walk away, the Holy Spirit say, mm. Now I want to talk to you about all that you just ran your mouth and just said. The Holy Ghost power is when you click on the page. Because you like what you see. And the Holy Ghost will say, now you know you ain't following them for extra massage. Let's be clear here. Because you ain't ran in a good minute. Unfollow. <laughs> Y'all with me? I'm telling you about the Holy Ghost. Maybe he don't deal with you like that. I'm just telling you how he deal with me. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost when you out with your friends. I know I'm going to step on some toes here. But I just feel like I should step. And everybody wants to order a Long Island. And you say, well, it's not a sin. I'm just telling you what I've done. I don't know what you do. And the Lord will say, it might not be a sin. And all things are lawful. But is it according to your orders of consecration? Is it okay for you? I'm, I'm just telling you how the Holy Ghost speak to me. And the Holy Ghost will say, ain't no wisdom in this. How dare us. Search the word of God just to find out how carnal we can be and still be saved. I'm telling you, God is not pleased with that. But this is what you got to know. And I, I don't want to harp on just things that might seem hard. The beauty in all of this is that there's a God who's not just out here to like whoop us and like rebuke, rebuke. He doesn't take joy and pleasure in rebuking. 
He sets it in order because he's saying, I really, really want your heart. And all of these things are standing in the way of intimacy with me. You read the Song of Solomon. He comes and it's just, it's just I don't even know what the educated term is. Apostle, you got them word bag, you know. Maybe it's an allegory or something. I don't know what it's called. Comparison or something. I don't even know what the allegory is, but it sounds like, <laughs> sound like it should fit. But here's this man and this woman and the husbandman and, 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 and this woman is, is so in love. And he comes to her door and he starts knocking and she knows it's him. Women be doing this stuff. <laughs> and she like, <laughs> my man is here. <laughs> I'm gonna make him wait. <laughs> See how bad he really wants me. But this is, you can't out beat a God who created the concept of seeking, right? He created pursuit. You can't beat him at it. So he's at the door and he said, oh, she wanna play games. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. He leaves his scent on the door. When she gets to the door, she opens the door and she says, <laughs> what Medea say <laughs> it lingers <laughs> she said oh my god I perceive my man was here y'all got to get this she sm just his smell she didn't see him he wasn't there he didn't say nothing just like she walked out and she knew that he had been there right? And she doesn't just say, oh, seemed like God was here and closed the door like we have a tendency to do, right? We worship just long enough to get the smell, the fragrance of his aroma, but we don't wait for the train. So the man leaves a scent. She opens the door. She says, I perceive my man has been here. She smells. And the scripture says she takes off running, Darnell. She goes running through the city saying, have you seen him? I know he was here because I smelt him. H have you seen him? I feel like he came this way, Jeremy, because I smelt him. Have you seen the lover of my soul? I know he was here. It's the same thing the women did when they came to the tomb of Jesus. And the angel said, he is not here, for he has risen as he said. Hallelujah. And they took off towards Jerusalem. And they said, have you seen him? Because I went to where he was, but he's not there no more. Have you seen him? Hallelujah. The scripture says that the people in the city were like, are you crazy? What's wrong with you? They even beat the poor girl. But she didn't stop. I'm telling you, when you are in desperate pur pursuit of Jesus, everything is going to try to stop you. Situations will align themselves. The devil will stir up old passions and old desires. The devil will try to get you to live low. The devil will try to get you to draw back from desperate pursuit. Why? Because he doesn't ever want you to come into the knowledge of God. Not to know about him, but to learn more and more and more. I've got to have him. The scripture tells us that the angels of the Lord are going around the throne crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They are always, for all of eternity, learning more of him. These are creatures who literally keep their eyes on him. In such a way that the scripture tells us that they got eyes in their wings and eyes all around them, just eyes everywhere, beholding him. And they've been beholding him for all of eternity and they're not tired yet why because everything that they have learned up to this point is still but a drop in the bucket of all that there is to know about him when you encounter God for real when you really encounter him it does something to you I remember when I encountered the Lord and I didn't have language. I didn't know what to call it. Now I know it's the Holy Ghost. But something touched me, and I felt it. 
in the core of who I was. It was like he had reached places I didn't know existed within me. Hallelujah. And it was as if when I talked to him, he just knew things about me that I didn't even know about myself. And he sets us on a journey. That kind of touch will make it so that you don't ever want to stop until you get everything that you can get. Let's run through this so we can wrap up tonight. I'm almost done. Y'all okay? Hope I'm not boring you. Philippians 3. What verse we in? In Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect, as many as be mature. That's what it, it means. The interpretation of the word perfect is to mature. It speaks of an active progression towards maturity. Let us therefore as many as be mature. Be this minded. And if it, in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. He's saying this. you got to have this mind. It's got to be made up in your heart where your mind is so persuaded that you can't have it any other way. When you make up your mind to follow him, this is what you have to know in 2021 where Jesus is a cute add-on. He is like a decoration to our lives. He, you know, we, we just choose him. I'll take that one. That's cute. I want to I wanna follow Apostle Williams. I want to follow Apostle Stevenson. I want to follow Apostle Lestrange. I'm Catholic, I'm Methodist, I'm Baptist. We just pick the cute one. We pick the type of Jesus and the expression that we like. Well, I'll go to this church because they have a nice children's ministry. And you know, that's cute. I want to look like I'm raising my kids, right? I'll go to this church because they got really good coffee. And they give out donuts before service. I'm not throwing shade. Giving the offering, we get some nice coffee and some donuts. But what I'm saying is how we treat Jesus in 2021 is if he is an accessory to our life. And so we build this life where we are the center of our world. And Jesus revolves around us. We come to church when we feel like it. We go to prayer meeting when we feel like it. Everything is optional. And you know what's so crazy to me? I hope you don't hear me as like some preacher just harping on this. Because this is the truth. I wasn't raised in this. So I'm not telling you just because I was so raised in it, just brainwashed. It's just all I've ever knew and I've just been bored. What I'm telling you is what I know. Back in the day, they had church every single day. You brought your kids to church, babysitter or not, and they slept on the floor. You brought a pillow and a blanket, Maybe. If your parents were saved, saved, they didn't, you didn't get that. They say, you know, the floor is good for you. It's peaceful in the presence, right? You're at church every single day. Evangelistic service, prayer meeting, choir rehearsal, revival. Revivals could go on seven, ten days, sometimes 30 days if the Lord started moving. You were in church all the time. In 2021, <laughs> we have so many options. It's literally cafeteria Christianity. Just choose the pieces that you like. It's Chipotle Jesus, right? We all know we're leaving with Chipotle, but everybody is unique, right? So you just choose. And everything is optional. And I'm not, this is the thing. There's good and bad to the changes that we have made. But what I'm saying is this, that... When you throw the baby out with the bathwater, you lose the principles of the kingdom. And when you lose the principles of the kingdom, how do you learn of him? When he is no longer the center. When Jesus is the center, everything revolves around him. I remember one time, and I'm a, I promise I'm a rapper. I feel Baptist a little bit. <laughs> when I was, I was, me and my brother used to have a very tumultuous relationship. Now, if you know us now or you just met us recently, you're probably like, what? Me and my brother clashed hard. 
And it's nothing but the grace of God that my brother is like one of my best friends today. But I remember years ago, I came to his house. I was visiting from Ohio. And I forget what we were talking about. But back in the day, the Lord's done a powerful work with my brother. But back in the day, even the mention of Jesus, it was like it just stirred him up. And he'd get to arguing. And it wouldn't be long before he was cussing you out. And he said to me, I remember one day, I don't even remember what, what I was talking about. And I feel like I only answered a question that he asked. I didn't even, I didn't bring it up. You brought it up. <laughs> and he said to me, he go to cussing me out. And then he was like, dang, Carl, can't you just turn that Jesus stuff down? I mean, I know that's what you do. But when you come around here, can you please just turn it down? And he had friends and stuff over. So I pulled him aside out front. And I said, hey. I said, I need to tell you something. And I said, I really want you to hear my heart when I say this. When I come around you, do I ever ask you to turn down your sin? When I get in your car that you own, do I ask you to change the radio station? No, I don't do that. Why? Because I expect you to be who you are. I don't ask you to turn the cussing down. That's y'all apologizing to me. I ain't never asked you not to cuss. That's your business. You pay the bills in this house. You cuss if you want to. Right? And I said to him, Jesus is not a part of my life. I can't just turn him off. I can't just turn him down. Jesus is literally the center of my world. And everything I do revolves around him. Now, I may have to adjust and, you know, be as wise. As gentle as a dove at times, whatever, you know, area or arena the Lord might put me in. But I'm never going to turn him down. Because you ain't never going to get me to please. Can you just not say Jesus? No, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. All this to say, let's stand because we're going to close. Paul says this. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, I follow on to know the Lord. It says I follow on that I might win the prize of the high calling, which is him. He is the prize. Y'all with me? He is the prize. And this walk with Jesus, the reason it's not a religion, the reason it's not, you know, just some other choice that you can make. You can't even come to God except he invites you. You can't even surrender, repent, except the Lord give you the grace to do it. Except the Lord reach out his hand and say, I want you to come. You would have never even thought about it. It is the Lord who draws us. It's his loving kindness. And when he draws you for real, he puts a thing in you that can never be satisfied. With every head bowed, every eye closed, God will never make a life for us that makes him irrelevant. He'll never allow us to live a life where we don't need him. And the Lord is so hungry for us, so desperate for our hearts that he would say tonight, wherever you find yourself, whoever you are, whether you're in this room or watching over the live stream, he would say, I am calling you and I'm beckoning you to come. Song of Solomon, it went on to say that as she kept running through the city, nothing stopping her, not even people beating her. She looked up and dancing upon the hilltops was the lover of her soul. And he said to her, Come away with me, my love, into a chamber of my love. So with our heads bowed and our eye closed, I'm going to ask this question. If you're in this room tonight, or if you're watching by live stream, you can type and tell us. And as you search your heart, if you would say, I don't know the Lord. My heart is not set to know him. Maybe you're in sin. Maybe you're backslidden. Maybe you're far from God. If that's you on the count of three, I want you to lift your hand. I want to pray for you. Tonight, the Lord is ready to shift your entire life.